On January 19th of last year, I made a video discussing different hero changes and how they affect D.Va going into Season 3, all the way back when she had 400 armor, 500 total HP, and Anna was dominating the meta for a second season now. Now that Season 9 has ended and Season 10 is on the horizon, with a seemingly shaky future ahead for tank players, I wanted to try and bundle these changes now on the PTR and announce changes that will be on the PTR soon together into one video and try and create a discussion point for both D.Va players and tank players alike. If you've got opinions on any of these incoming changes or on the state of D.Va, please leave your opinions in the comments. The discussion generated is always welcome and awesome to interact and read with, and I also just enjoy hearing other people's opinions about the state of the game currently. We will be going through most of the planned and currently testable changes on the PTR, and showcase both what they are and how they will impact D.Va or other tanks going into Season 10. I won't be talking much about Lucio, Zenyatta, Genji or Junkrat changes as they don't impact D.Va much overall and will bloat the duration of the video more. So without delaying it any longer, let's get started! After enough complaining from the player base, it's finally happened. Post rework D.Va received her first nerf. Personally, I believe the nerf is probably one of the most annoying ones she could have received as there are greater issues to D.Va's kit currently, but I'm happy that the nerf is light enough that D.Va players don't really have to change their playstyle or I have to rework my guide for the third f***ing time. In my opinion, it would have been smarter for Blizzard to nerf the ability for D.Va to use missiles in conjunction with her cannons or matrix, which means if she starts using her missiles, she must commit to dealing damage, rather than being able to deal a lot of burst and defend herself or her teammates at the same time. Going into the future, it's been predicted that this change won't actually result in much loss of power with D.Va. Her missile damage going from 162 if accurate down to 128 if you land an entire volley directly may seem like a massive difference, but realistically only increases the time to kill for a squishy target by half a second or even less. Because the damage is nerfed though, it's important to utilize missiles properly and only engage with them when you know you can hit them accurately. The tips video I made with my micro missiles guide still apply. For example, if you're boosting into a target, try and minimize the amount of turning you need to do to keep the missiles in a direct straight line towards your target, because it allows you to land more direct hits. Dealing less damage, even if it's a small nerf, does mean that you generate less ult charge, and whilst her ult rate has been pretty bonkers after the rework because of how much more damage D.Va does now, it'll take a little bit of extra time to generate a self-destruct, simply because you're losing some of the damage you used to deal before the missile nerf. Personally, I believe that this matchup against Hanzo still remains as even as it was before. Buffed arrow speeds or the addition of lunge mean little to D.Va as she can still eat the arrows just like before. The draw speed of his bow is not changed either, meaning that the muscle memory D.Va players have built up over the years playing against Hanzo now doesn't need to change either. Scatter and Storm Arrow both do similar amounts of damage, only with Storm Arrow being harder to matrix. The buff from Storm Arrow lasts for 6 seconds, meaning that it's much more difficult to matrix all of the rapid volley unless the enemy Hanzo is an idiot. I mean, most Hanzo players in low elo are I guess, but that's beside the point. This is technically a power shift for the matchup in Hanzo's favour, but if the D.Va is able to negate at least some of the Storm Arrow volley, nom, 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 nom. she stands a very good chance of winning the matchup just like before. It's all about managing matrix cooldowns and combining that with your missile damage to beat him in the duel before he can deep mech you. Because I've been a long time Hoshizora fan, these Symmetra changes have me rather excited. Symmetra's viability has been questioned for a long time now, so hopefully this upcoming rework will push her into a more appropriate state where she isn't considered a troll pick. Changes to Symmetra's turrets is a bit of a challenge for D.Va, as her reduced boost damage and weak cannons unless at close range means that even with just 30 HP, these turrets will take more individual attention to kill, whereas currently she can just boost into a nest of turrets to clear them all effortlessly. You sadly won't be able to kill turrets from the, across the map anymore, which is something I'm actually going to miss. The changes to Symmetra's teleporter are probably the most exciting part of the kit. With this gif from Andy GMB on the Overwatch subreddit visualizing exactly what I'm most excited for with the new Symmetry work, 
the ability to pass a diva bomb through her teleporter, which she can now place from range. Some pretty insane combinations are bound to be made with this new teleporter, and I for one am extremely excited to put some awesome bombs into a montage as soon as these changes are available on the PTR or the live servers. Whilst changes to her beam damage and orbs no longer passing through shields mean little to D.Va, her new ultimate poses an extra challenge for D.Va's looking to throw a good bomb towards the enemy team. Ideally, the 5000 HP shield will be placed on an angle, allowing the enemy team to dance between the barrier to block projectiles and screw over the enemy team. Whilst dive compositions wouldn't have an issue getting past this barrier, poke compositions or characters like Widowmaker will struggle to pick targets as they'd have to move past the barrier and possibly into a risky spot to be able to deal any damage. Diva's mobility means that she'll have no trouble getting past the barrier, but destroying it will be difficult because even her ult will only deal a fifth of its HP and she cannot afford to waste time attacking it or even just wasting a bomb on it. Whilst these constant Mei buffs do look a bit scary for a D.Va player, as it's often agreed that Mei screws you over, the buffs here do not fix Mei's core issues that D.Va has always abused in her favour. Boosters ignore any speed boost or reductions applied to D.Va whilst they're active, meaning that if she's being slowed down by Mei's blaster, boosters can get you to a safe distance if you can use them in time and avoid being frozen. Note that whilst you're boosting you can't be slowed, but you can still be frozen if you're not fast enough. Just like before these buffs, it's always important to keep your distance against a Mei and only engage her when you have boosters to manoeuvre yourself back into a safe spot, as it's often better as D.Va to protect your teammates killing the Mei rather than trying to kill her yourself. You can matrix your frozen allies and save their life, but you can't really do much to protect yourself if you get frozen. Sadly for D.Va players, this once tough matchup just became even harder. Matrix and Missiles used to be an easy solution for Reaper, as it allows her to burst him down before he could regen enough health and fight back, especially if you were smart and fought him after he started his reload. Because Reaper players can now instantly cancel their Wraith for a very quick reload, it means that D.Va players can't play around his reload as much anymore to try and win a duel. Combined with the fact that missiles do less damage now, and the fact that he gets full ammo after his ult, it will be more difficult to both shut down reapers, and also to protect teammates after you've used all your matrix on him whilst he was ulting with his death blossom, as he can simply shoot them down after ulting because you'll have no matrix left. Against reaper now, it's a matter of being proactive with your boosters to boop him away from teammates to reduce his damage, and to focus protecting teammates that have the tools to shut him down, such as McCree, by body blocking and matricing them so they can get key abilities off such as Flashbang. Brigitte, Bridget, Vegeta, Brisket, Baguette, Brachetta, whatever you want to call her on paper, seems like a very annoying hero, not just for D.Va, but for the entire roster. A lot of players initially praised her for being a potential killer of the dive meta, but quickly realised that her countering dive really just meant that she f***s over most of the roster. Most of Brigida's kit can be used effectively to mess up a diva. Her shield and whip both block her bomb, and she can also interrupt you as you enter your mech with her shield bash. Brigida is amazing in close quarters because of her inspire passive. Being in flail range basically means she can constantly heal both herself and nearby allies, while dealing a respectable amount of damage. Diva sadly needs to stay within Brigida's effective range to deal damage herself, meaning it is very hard to fight her. If your team is able to keep their distance from Brigitte and break her personal shield, she's a much easier to target to kill because she can't shield bash whilst her barrier is broken and cannot stop either your micro missiles or block it because she won't have her shield. Just like a character such as Mei, Brigitte excels in 1v1 fights but cannot manage or lock down multiple people at once very well. Bringing a friend with you to fight Brigitte is your best chance of beating her as D.Va if your team cannot poke her down from long range. Having one of the fattest hitboxes in the game, D.Va was easy to both farm Pulse Bomb from and to stick with Tracer's ultimate. This nerf is great for both D.Va players and tanks, as it will hopefully promote Tracer players to ult squishy targets rather than tanks. In turn, this will allow opportunistic D.Va players to mitigate Pulse Bombs with the defense matrix by positioning around these squishy targets that Tracers should be sticking, and being aware when Tracer blinks in close range to land an easy stick. With Brigitte on the horizon though, 
players express their frustration against her, and many predict to see much less Tracer, and Genji consequently, in the future. Meaning other DPS heroes like Farah, McCree, Soldier and Doomfist could step up and take the place of Tracer and Genji. With all of these heroes bar Doomfist being characters D.Va easily takes care of and match up greatly in her favour. With more characters she counters possibly being introduced into the meta in the future, it could be seen that D.Va being played is promoted even more, even after her micro missiles and boost is getting nerfed. Time will have to tell, but balance changes around these current heroes that are meta will have lots of indirect effects to D.Va and other characters that must be accounted for. Sombra's rework away from a support style of play towards a more aggressive flanker is a welcome change away from the resident sleeper inducing health pack farm style of play, but the decreased hack time and shorter spread is an incredible source of frustration not just for D.Va players, but for most characters on the roster. Thankfully though, one addition that helps D.Va players out more than others is the new hack breaking rule. If Sombra receives damage, no matter how small, hack is put on a cooldown for 2 seconds rather than being immediately refreshed. This means that a D.Va, even if she's over 20 meters away and deals 0.6 damage per pellet of her gun, will still be able to break hack extremely easily, as long as she can react in time before the hack is completed. D.Va's playstyle and her matchup hasn't changed much with Sombra's rework, but even now it's more important than ever to ensure you focus firing her when she engages properly to avoid getting hacked herself, and when she's trying to farm her ult to matrix her target to delay the time it takes her to get EMP as long as possible, as EMP is an ult that can win a teamfight by itself. Sombra might be seeing more coming into Season 10 because of her ability to easily shut down Brigitte's CC spam and the upcoming Symmetra rework, so it's going to be more difficult for Divas to make plays because of risk of being shut down by hack, yet produce more awesome opportunities for her to land some nutty bomb combos alongside an allied Sombra's EMP. I know a lot of people, especially Diva players, hate Sombra, but I want to remain optimistic as there are good sides to every bat. That wraps up all of the significant changes recently made to the game around Diva. I hope we're going into Season 10 that she's still a plenty viable and enjoyable character, and that these new hero reworks create more fun and engaging matchups that can put my mechanical ability to the test. I know a lot of people have been frustrated over the balance changes being made to the game as of late, but in a positive spirit I know that it's in Blizzard's best interest as a company to keep the game fun for all players, otherwise they will simply move away from Overwatch as a game. Overwatch is still my passion, so I hope to try my best in competitive for Season 10, provided Uni doesn't screw me over with my availability of time. Thank you so much for watching, any comments or likes are much appreciated. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more quality content from me from whenever I upload, be sure to subscribe or even turn on notifications if you're feeling generous. Good luck in solo queue and have a wonderful day.